Hello, it's Thursday. So if you watched last week's video, you would have seen me do 24 hours worth of crochet. So during the 24 hour challenge, I specifically did the grown up version of this little guy. So today I will be showing you how to make Chunk the Baby Dragon, but I will be doing it in the yellow and pink coloration. I will leave a link to the Baby Dragon video here as well, just in case that's the one you're actually looking for. Okay, let's get into it. Now, for those of you disappointed that we're going to be doing Chunk and not Mushu, don't worry, I will do Mushu next week. So hit the subscribe button and turn on notifications and you will be alerted the second this pattern goes live. So we have the hatching version and the hatched version, but if this video gets to 100 likes, I will start work on designing an adult version. All right, let's break this down into the pieces that you're going to need. So those are our pieces. So it is a longish pattern. Uh, so that's what we're gonna do. So now moving on to tools and materials. So for tools and materials, I'm gonna pop a list on the screen now showing everything you'll need for this project. But that's it. Okay, so we're gonna start with the head and I'm gonna start with the piece that goes under everything else. We start in our belly color and we work up sort of the head piece in that. Then we swap to our body color and we do a series of short rows just to um, round out this neck opening and we leave that open to where it attaches to the body. Okay, so that's the end of row 15 and we should have 28 stitches around. What we're going to do is we're going to be starting our short rows shortly. <laughs> um, subscribe and the puns stop. So what we're going to do is put 10 single crochet in just to move our where our loop currently is and then we'll be swapping colours. So I'll pop these 10 stitches in now. So that's 9 and in the 10th one I'm going to change colour. So just because it's been a little while since I've shown this, um, though you can always go back to the pumpkin spider video if you want to practice this like 40 times, we're going to change colour in this final stitch. So I'm going to insert my hook and pull up a loop just like I normally would for a single crochet. I'm going to hold that colour, the old colour out of the way. I'm going to hold my new colour parallel with it. So you see I've got both of them off to one side and I'm going to finish this stitch with my new colour. And from there I can just continue on with my new colour. So the best thing to do is to tie these in a knot and that'll just stop it unraveling as well. And we can get away with that because that's now tucked away nicely on the inside of the piece. So now we're going to start our short rows. Basically what I mean by short rows is that we're not going to work the whole way around. We'll be working backwards and forwards along just one section of the piece. So first up, I'm going to chain one and turn. And we're going to start by working 18 single crochet back along the top. I'm going to chain one and turn. Basically we're just going to keep working backwards and forwards like that. It's going to stay within the yellow we've already kind of outlined and that's going to just help us round off the rest of this neck. There we go, we finished off the back of the head. Now this is a very strange looking piece, but all of the pieces that make up this little roly poly fellow are gonna be quite strange looking, so brace yourself for that. So I'm gonna pop this to one side now. There we go, and now we're gonna make the face mask piece, and for that we're gonna use our body color. It's like the, the never ending hassle of not having a properly working center pull. I wonder if I can get one. Hey, <laughs> things crocheters say, we'll eat up this vomit in no time. All right, we're gonna make this face mask we start at the tip of the nose, we're doing a magic circle, and then we start working short rows backwards and forwards to create sort of the top of the face piece. We then use chain loops to create these eye openings, and we keep working towards the back of the head. So you'll see on this little guy, I've given him these little dealy boppers, and inside each of those is actually a little ring of our belly color. So just quickly before we go any further, I'm just going to whip up two magic rings of six single crochet, and then a slip stitch to finish the loop, Finish off. Just like that. Now I'm going to pop those to one side until we need them. 
So grabbing your body color, we're going to start, first two rows are pretty easy, they're just a magic ring of six. Uh, and then we're going to increase in each of those to get us up to 12 stitches. So I'm just gonna whip that up now. So there are those first two rows. We are up to 12 stitches around. So first up, we're going to chain one and turn. We've turned and now we're gonna do an increase. Then six single crochet across. And then another increase. Like that. So now I'm gonna chain one and turn again. And we'll be working backwards and forwards just along this edge for the next three rows. Okay, so we've worked up a good little chunk of our nose cone there. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna start working up our eye sockets. So we chain one and turn again. And I'm gonna put two single crochet back along the edge just to move our eyes in a little bit. Just like that. And I'm gonna chain 10. Which might seem like a lot, but it won't in a minute. <laughs> We're gonna skip two stitches on our piece. And in that third stitch, I'm gonna single crochet again. And then I'm gonna single crochet five more times to make six in total across that middle section. Okay, I'm then gonna chain 10 again to make the second eye loop, like so. And then we're going to skip two, and once again, single crochet, and then a single crochet in the last one as well. So that is the start of our eye loops. So chain one and turn. Okay, so we're gonna put a single crochet in each of those two stitches. Ah, that's an actual knot. Thankfully, it's not a very complicated knot. <laughs> Told you, subscribe if you want the puns to stop. Right, so what we're gonna do is put 10 single crochet along this chain. Not, not into each individual stitch, but around the chain itself. So you'll note that I'm grabbing part of the chain and I'm just moving these stitches back to create a little bit more room for myself. And you'll also note that I've put 10 in, but there's still roughly two chains free on the inner edge of that eye. And that's, that's good because the next thing we're actually gonna do is we're gonna put a double crochet into each of those stitches along the middle. So for those of you who don't know, uh, cause I know that sometimes the terminology differs, double crochet is when you yarn over your hook, insert your hook into the stitch, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through the first two loops on your hook and then yarn over and pull through the second two loops on your hook, just like that, which is why we left those chains free to start with. And I'm gonna put a double crochet, like I said, in each of those six along the middle. Just like that. Now we're going to work 10 single crochet around this chain. So just like before, we're gonna leave roughly two chains free on the inner edge of it. So starting up here. It's our first single crochet and I'm gonna put nine more down that chain. I ran out of room, so I'm gonna grab and pull. <laughs> pull them back as well, just to redistribute. So that's 10 along that chain. And then I'm gonna put a single crochet into each of those last two stitches. So that's the end of that row and you see our eye loops are coming together quite nicely now. Once again, chaining one and turning. So two single crochet. And then the next eight stitches we're going to work in back post. So back post is when you work your stitch around the post of the stitch instead of into one of the loops. So what that means is that at this point you have to decide conclusively which side is your front and which side is your back. So for me, the tail is on this side, so that would make this my back. And that means that I will be inserting my hook from the back and then bringing it out to back to the back. And that's what makes it a back post stitch. That's my first. I'm gonna work seven more of those along this ridge. And that's eight. And if I look at the front of my piece, you'll see that what that's done is given me this very nice eyebrow ridge. 
If you don't like using back posts, you could use back loop there, or you can even just skip it. You'll just have a less pronounced eyebrow ridge when, when you're done. So it's kind of a trade-off. Okay, and then we're gonna work 10 single crochet just through both loops across the top of the forehead. And then we'll be working back post around the next eight stitches. like that. And then for the last two stitches we'll be working through both loops and putting one single crochet into each. Alrighty, chain one and turn. Okay, so for the next row the first stitch is an increase so we'll put two single crochet into that first stitch. Then just one single crochet in the next one. We are then going to be working in the back loops for the next eight stitches. So little stitch anatomy again. So crochet has two loops to it. So we have a front loop and a back loop. I know that the back of my piece has the tail sticking out on it. So that means this time the back is facing away from me, which means that the loop is also the loop facing away from me. And for the next eight stitches, I'm going to work my single crochet into the back loops of the stitch. Once again, if you do not like doing back loop, you can just do regular single crochet here. It's just, once again, you will have a less pronounced eyebrow ridge. Just like that. So you'll see that now we have this front loop sticking out as well, giving us this nice doubled ridge. I'm then gonna work 10 single crochet through both loops across the top. Like so. And then once again, working in the back loops, I'm gonna do eight single crochet down this second ridge. So then we're going to do a single crochet through both loops in the next stitch and then we're going to do an increase in the final stitch of that round. Just like that. Okay, now you're going to chain one and turn. So from here on out it becomes a lot easier. Uh, we're just going to work three more rows backwards and forwards to finish bulking out the back of the head. Okay, so there is the bulk of our face mask, but we just need to go along and add his fringy little frilly bits. So note that I haven't finished off from that last round because we're just gonna continue straight on. And I'm gonna start by chaining five and turning. And then we are going to work down the chain we just created. So starting in the second chain from hook, uh, I'm gonna put four single crochet down that chain. I'm then going to slip stitch into the next stitch on the head. There is our first little fringy fellow. I'm going to slip stitch into the next one up and I'm going to chain six. So turning and once again starting in the second chain from the hook, I'm going to put five single crochet back down that chain. I'm then going to slip stitch into the next stitch to finish that from and slip stitch again and we're going to chain seven and put six single crochet down the side of the chain. And slip stitch into the next stitch. So there are our three curly little frilly bits on, on one side. So now before we finish off, we need to create his little dearly bopper on top of his head. So in order to do that, we're gonna slip stitch into the next three stitches because we want our dearly bopper to fall roughly even with the inner edge of that eye opening. And then I'm gonna chain four. We're gonna grab one of the little discs that we made earlier, and I'm going to single crochet around the outside of that disc, so that's six single crochet. So once we've gone around the whole outside, we're actually gonna work down the chain that we started with and we're gonna put four single crochet down that chain. All right, so that's our little dealy bopper. And then I'm going to slip stitch into the next stitch just to anchor it properly to the head. And then I'm gonna finish off. But wait, I hear you say, that's only half the skull done. Uh, yeah, so we work this side 
from this side so that they all point downwards. If we'd continued working across and just sort of slip stitched and done the rest of them, they all would have curved this way as well. So it would have looked like he'd been caught in a strong wind. Whereas if we swap to the other side and start and reattach our yarn and start again from here, they'll curl downwards too, like we want them to. So that's why we do that little bit of nonsense. So we're just gonna repeat that whole process on this side of the skull now. It's, it's a little bit giraffe in yellow, isn't it? <laughs> but anyway, there is our, our face mask piece done. So that actually completes part one. And that is by far the most complicated piece. So some assembly required there, but basically it will fit over the top of that beautiful distinguished jawline and uh, form our dragon head. So I'm going to put that to one side for now and we're going to get to work on the body. So the body is an easy peasy little jelly beanie uh, and basically we start at the top and we work in a continuous spiral all the way down the length of the body. So working entirely in your body colour, we're going to do that now. So with 18 stitches left around the opening of our little jelly bean here, we are going to stuff this now. You are going to want to stuff this piece quite firmly. And I'm also gonna add my weights in at this point in time, but I'm gonna stuff it first and then slide the weights into position. And I'm gonna slide those weights. So we've got the belly at the front. I'm gonna slide those weights into the back. like that. Okay, so now we're just going to finish up working around and close off the rest of this gap. Okay, so that's finished now. You can kind of see where the weights are, but I think that um, it's not going to matter so much. And the purpose of that is that now when I pop it down, like not the way up that I want it to be, it just sort of wobbles around and sits correctly. Whereas like this guy, if I do the same thing with him, ready, watch this. There's no signs of life. <laughs> Whereas this one wants to stay up the right way. And that is why we would put weights in. Okay, so that is our body done. So now we are finally moving on to part three, which is the tail. Okay, so the tail is once again worked just in our body color. We start at the tip and we're gonna work our way down to the sort of the, the thicker part of the tail. We are gonna work it entirely in our body color and it works up in a continuous spiral like a little cone. So we're gonna do that now. And with that, we're just going to finish off. Okay, so we're just going to pop that to one side as well. And next up, we are going to make some belly plates. So they are constructed entirely in our belly color. And we actually work several ridges into them using back post, just like we did with the eyebrow ridges on, on the face. So I'm going to start with the chest piece. And we start by chaining 11. And then turning our piece and starting in our second chain from our hook, we work 10 single crochet back across. Just like that. And now we're gonna chain one and turn and we're gonna work an increase, then eight single crochet and then another increase. So 
it should get us up to 12 stitches across. And now I'm gonna chain one and turn again. And this time when we cross, we're gonna work in back post. So side facing me is going to be my back. So I need to insert my hook around the stitch. Now that first one, it's going to be coming in from the side. So it's a little bit funny looking. And we work our stitch around the post. The next one is a little bit more normal. So just work the whole row in back post. So we chain one and turn and admire our handiwork. So that gives us the first ridge on our, on our belly. So now I'm going to work 12 single crochet across again, but this time I'm just going to work through both loops like a normal stitch. Then we're going to chain one and turn. And we're once again going to back post 12 single crochet across. Chain one and turn. And we're going to work our final row of this piece as just 12 single crochet across in both loops and then we'll finish off at the end. So there is our finished chest plate uh, and you can see that those are the ridges we formed. Now using that exact same technique, we're going to create the tail as well. Okay, we lost a little footage, but there is the finished tail. So now that is part, so now that's part four complete. So part five is the back legs and they're comprised of a haunch and a foot. So we make it as two separate pieces. Now the haunch is started in the middle and it's just worked up in a continuous spiral as we work towards the outside and it makes basically a little cup shape and that is where we're going to start. So we make that using our body colour again. All right, so that is the end of the haunch and we will be putting stuffing in here uh, once we go to attach it, basically sew three quarters around and, and stuff it from there. But we are going to need two of these, so. Hmm. There we go. So those are our two haunches. So now all we have to do is make the feet. Okay, so for the feet, we start in our body color and we're starting at the heel of the foot. And basically we are working around and around and around, continuous spiral again up until the top of the foot. And you'll be left with an opening that's 14 stitches around. And what we'll be doing is working around some of the stitches for each toe in their own little, little loops. So for now, we are just going to grab our body color and work up the main part of the foot. Okay, so that is the base of our foot. And now we are going to attach this toenail. So first I'm just gonna tuck this bit inside. I'm not gonna stuff it because we want it to sit pretty flat. And I'm going to grab my belly color. Okay, so I'm gonna attach my yarn in the stitch after we finished off. So that was our last single crochet in our body color. And so this is the one I'm gonna attach into. And you can slip stitch, chain one, and then single crochet. I'm just gonna do a standing single crochet. And then I'm gonna single crochet into the next stitch. And at that point, I'm gonna turn the work because we're working this first toenail and it doesn't go the whole way around. So then counting backwards from where we put our first stitch. So our first stitch is there. I want one and two. So I want this stitch here. I'm gonna insert my hook from the outside of that piece. And I'm going to work my stitch in that one there. And then I'm going to just single crochet into the next stitch as well. So that is the circle we're going to be uh, completing our first toenail in. So then what we're just going to do is we're going to put a decrease into these first two stitches. Just like that. And we're going to leave that, that bottom layer unworked. So at this point I'm going to finish off. 
All right, and then we're just gonna very carefully tuck the loose end away so that we don't ruin the point of our toenail. So that is our first toenail. So now we're gonna be doing the second one. Okay, so we're going to start in the stitch next to the, our first toenail, if that makes sense. And once again, just gonna attach our yarn. I'm using a, standard sing a standing single crochet. I am then going to crochet into the next two. I'm going to turn my whole piece and then counting backwards from this toenail here, we have one and two, and that's where I'm going to stitch next. Okay, and then I'm gonna turn my work again and I'm going to put a decrease into those first two stitches like we did last time. And I'm going to finish off, once again, leaving the rest of the stitches unworked. And we tuck in that loose end again. It's our second toenail, so now we just have one more to go. Okay, so with the toenails on the right side of the piece and the opening on the left, we're going to attach our yarn in that first stitch. And I'm going to put a single crochet in the next four stitches, just working our way around this edge. Like that. And now I'm going to just turn my piece back. And in the first two stitches we did, once again, we're just going to decrease. Leaving the rest of the stitches unworked. We're going to finish off. And tuck that final end away. And that is our little foot. Okay, so we have our first foot and a second foot. Now we can pop this aside as well and that is part five done. So now we are just going to move on and do his arms and then we're going to stop and we're going to do a bunch of assembly before we make the wings. So for the arm we're going to start at the shoulder and work in a continuous spiral up to the wrist where they're going to stuff it very very slightly and swap to working in the flat to make the hand. So grab your body color and we're gonna work up the arm first. So that's the end of row 10 and we are, and it should be six stitches around. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna start working it as a flat piece. So we're gonna chain one and turn. And then I'm going to work through both layers for this bit here. So matching those stitches up. So we've chained one, we've turned, and then in that first pair of stitches near the hook, we're gonna insert our hook and single crochet. In the next pair, we're gonna single crochet. And then in this final pair of stitches, we are going to do an increase. So that is the start of our hand. So now we're gonna chain one and turn, and we're just gonna to continue to work backwards and forwards to, to create this hand. So we'll put three single crochet in, like so. And then we're gonna put an increase in at the end, which will get the row up to five stitches. Then we're gonna chain one and turn, and we will decrease single crochet and decrease. And then we're gonna finish off and then weave in that bit of the yellow. So that's our arm. We just need to attach our claws now. So pop the body color to one side and grab your belly color. Okay, so there should be three stitches to work in along the top, but the first slip stitch we're going to do is just through that last chain, the chain one we did at the end of the row. And I'm just gonna slip stitch in there to join our claw. I am then going to chain two, then I'm going to turn the work and in the second chain from the hook, so that first chain we did, I'm going to put a single crochet. I am then going to slip stitch through the first stitch available on top. And that is our first claw. So I'm going to do that again now, so chain two. One single crochet in the second chain from hook. And then slip stitch into the next stitch along the hand. So that's our second claw. And we're going to do that one more time for the third claw. Chain two, single crochet in the second chain from hook. 
and then slip stitch in the final stitch available along the top there. And finish off. So now you can weave those pink ends in. They can be slightly visible because one side of this is going to be up against the tail, so you won't be able to see them from the outside. The idea is just to tuck them in towards the middle of the hand so that we can more easily tuck them away later. And there is your first arm and you are going to need two of those, so ta-da! Okay, so those are all of the pieces we need for our base dragon and now we are going to stop and do a little assembly before we do the wings. So first up, let's assemble the head a little bit more. So the most obvious thing that we're missing on the head at the moment are the eyes. So let's attach those first. As you might've heard me mention before, the easiest way to help you position the eyes is to stuff the piece, position the eyes, unstuff the piece to snap the backs on and then restuff the piece. So that's what we're gonna do now. I'm just gonna stuff it really quick. So then we also have the ultimate eye guide here as well. So the face piece is going to show you conclusively where your eyes should go. Sorry, note that I've not stuffed the neck bit. That's just gonna complicate things. I've just stuffed the head for now. All right, so we line up. So we line up the noses of the two pieces. Chuck a pin in there to hold it. And we stretch the center back of the head to the line where we changed our colors. Basically, we're gonna stitch that in place so that you can't see any pink at that point of the head and then carefully pinning because my thumb is inside this piece. We then turn it and you'll note that we have these little curved pieces on the face mask for the jaw. We line each of those up with the curve of the jaw as well. So just like that. So that's the face mask roughly in place and you'll see that it lines up two little pockets where we want our eyes to go. So I'm just gonna grab my eyes here and position them loosely within those two openings. So roughly there. I'm now going to unpin, just because it's safer, that face piece. And that's where our eyes should be. And then we unstuff and we snap the backs onto both of those clips. Okay, so now we're just gonna restuff and we're going to pin the face back where we positioned it before. Okay, so I took a little extra time finessing the eye socket. So basically you want that eyebrow ridge to hug the back of your eye and you want a little corner of pink to be showing on the inner corner. So I just had to like adjust very carefully one of these eye sockets a little bit, but that is roughly what we're aiming for. So now we're gonna stitch this on and I like to start at the back of the head, so back here, and stitch around the outer rim of the whole jaw, attaching it firmly all the way around back to the top of the head. I then like to do each of the eye sockets. So stitching around just to anchor them exactly where we want them to sit. So that's what we're gonna do now. And then we'll come back and give him some nostrils. Okay, so that is the, the face mask fully sewn on and tucked all of our ends away. And you gotta love a seamless join, don't you? Oh, that's beautiful. It's a beautiful thing. All right, so now we're just gonna give him a couple of little nostrils. So we're gonna use top stitching for that, which I'm admittedly just starting to experiment with a little bit. So starting from, you can see our starting point, that little magic ring there. You wanna go one, two, three rows out. You wanna line it up with the inner edge of that eye. So that stitch there, and then you're just going to insert your hook around that stitch and then attach your yarn with a slip stitch. We're then going to put three single crochet around the post of that stitch. And then going to, following that round along, I'm gonna slip stitch twice. And then I'm gonna put three single crochet around this stitch on the other side. And slip stitch to finish. So those are our two little nostrils and I'm just gonna tuck the ends away again. So, and then you'll note on Chonk, he's got a little purple inside each nostril. I just stitched that in with a needle and then the color. So I will, will do that when I have a little bit of pink on my needle. So there are his nostrils. Okay, so now we can assemble even more. So grab your body and identify the belly part of it and the chest part of it. So the chest part of it should be the, where we started. It should be slightly narrower, whereas the belly is going to be quite broad, chonky, basically. And you'll see our starting point is right there. And I'm just going to put the opening of the head directly over the top of that point. 
and I'm gonna grab and stretch the back of the head down the back of that body piece. Chuck a couple of pins in to secure it. Fold these little, little flagellas out of the way and you'll see we've still got some more back of the head there. I'm just gonna stretch that down and pin that in place too. So that's what we currently have. The next piece I'm gonna pin in place is this little chest piece. So we're gonna tuck that starting chain right up under the chin. And that'll be where that goes. Okay, and now I'm gonna stuff our tail piece. So our inner tail bit lays flush with that opening, that straight edge that we didn't short row over. And the tip of it goes on the tip of the tail as well. Just sort of loosely pin that into place for now. And then that piece will go there like that, lining up the two edges of those inner plates. Before we attach those two, I'm just gonna attach the tail plate to the tail. So while we've done that, I'm just going to trim that off and we're going to sew on the belly plate as well. Now in order to do this, you might need to detach your head, so be prepared for that eventuality. You can always pin it back on. If you got it right once, you will get it right again. Okay, so I'm gonna use a little bit of pink and I'm just gonna stitch in the inner of the nostrils. Now, do you mind having your nose pierced? Okay, you saw it, you got consent. There we go. So with the head pinned back in place, we are now going to pin our tail in place. So as mentioned, we're gonna just line up the edges of that belly plate. Give it a good squish if you need to. That's kind of the shape we're looking for. Second edge, and then I'm gonna grab the starting point of that tail and give it a good stretch down. I wanna get it as close to our finishing point on the body as we can. You'll note that we added no additional stuffing to the base of the tail or to the neck. We just flattened them out along the body. That's what that currently looks like. Now, just to give you a bit of an idea of where we're heading with this, I'm gonna pin the rest of the pieces in place. So I'll start with the haunches. So they go over the top of sort of the seam between the tail and the body. And I think I mentioned this before, but we will sew three quarters of the way around each of those and then stuff them as well so that they pop out at an appropriate chonkiness. So same thing on the other side. And so we then have grabbers and they tuck in that little gap between the haunch and the jawbone. So it'll go in here like this. And we attach them firmly at the shoulder and then we attach the hand itself to the tail. Same on the other side. And last but not least, you'll have your feet and we attach them to the haunch, poking slightly out to each side, just to give it that real cute baby look. And we do that to both of those feet. So there, oh, I forget how cute they are. Okay, um, all right, so that is what that is all going to look like. So I recommend you sew your head and tail on first and then you do your haunches and your arms and then your feet. So I'm just gonna go and sew all these pieces on now. Alrighty, so there is all of the pieces sewn on. You'll note that I've just pinned the little frilly bits out the way. So her hair, her hair is in rollers. And now all we have to do is part seven, which is make her a couple of little wings. Sorry, while stitching her together, I arbitrarily decided that she was female. So we have chonk and chonkette make these wings. So, so you need your belly color to start with and we are going to chain 10. So then I'm going to turn the piece and starting in the third chain from our hook, so one, two and three, I'm going to put a double crochet into that one there. I'm then going to double crochet into each of the available chains along which should give me eight in total including the one we just did. So if yours is curling over like mine is, give it a bit of a tug, it will straighten out those stitches for you. So now we're going to chain two and turn and six double crochet back along the top. So 
So you will see that that leaves two stitches free that we're not going to stitch into. I'm going to chain one and we're going to turn and slip stitch into the next three stitches. Just like that. I'm then going to chain two and putting the first one in the stitch we just slip stitched into, I'm going to do four double crochet along the rest of the wing. And we're going to finish off. So there's the inside bit of our wing. And now we just need to grab our body colour. We are going to join at the tip of the wing. So this is the shoulder and this is the tip. I'm going to join with a slip stitch. I'm going to do three more slip stitches. Then I'm going to put five single crochet up to the top of the wing. Now turning it so that we're working down the other side, I'm going to put another single crochet into that top stitch. Just basically it's an increase that will help us turn. And I'm going to fit as many single crochet as comfortably fits down the side here. It should be six or seven. It's going to depend on your gauge, your hook size. So for me that was seven. And we finish off. What I am going to do is just weave this tail in along the back of the wing. So just like that. And you do need two of those. So there we go. So now we just stitch those on to her back. Now this is where the, the point of the neck was attached. We're just going to pin them roughly centrally and stitch them on two or three stitches up, leaving the rest free. I'm just going to sew those on now. All right, so there is our finished dragon. I hope you enjoyed making her. So now I have my roly poly chonk and my roly poly chonkette. Um, don't worry, the mushu pattern is going to be up next week. Don't forget to hit subscribe so that you don't miss out on that. But if this video hits 100 likes, I will start work on the next age bracket for our dragon friend here. So if you want to see it, all you got to do is hit that like button. A written version of this pattern has been provided to my patrons and will also be available on my Etsy store. I will link to both in the description below. I'm going to bundle the pattern up with the hatching baby dragon actually. So if you're looking for a bargain, you'll be able to get both of those together. Other than that, I will see you next week with Mushu. Okay, bye. You know what it looks like? <laughs> yeah, it kind of, wait, wait, it's just missing its eye. You know what it looks like? <laughs> what do you think it looks like? <gasps> A glow bug's butt. Oh yeah, totally. <laughs> and we'll just turn the screaming off.